Hey guys, Seth here from the future. I'm about to share some podcasts that were recorded just a little bit ago. Um, and the reason why we're releasing them is because we still believe there's some good stuff in there. Now, first, you may know some things that aren't quite accurate anymore. We are no longer Make It Known Media. We are now Seth David Films. And we have been filming for a little bit longer than the time we say in the said podcasts. However, a lot of these concepts are still things we think are not only valuable, but will help you have a better wedding day. So we wanted to release these to the public because we believe it gives you a better chance to just be prepared for what is your most expensive day of your life. We hope you enjoy, and thanks for tuning in to Seth David Films Podcast. Hi guys, and welcome back to the Make It Known Media Wedding Videography Podcast, <laughs> where we do our best to help inform you on how to make your wedding day amazing, how to introduce a little bit about ourselves, and to inspire you so you can create your ultimate wedding day experience. Hi, my name is Seth, and I'm here with and the lovely... This is Eleni. And we are part of the Make It Known Media team. Welcome. Welcome. So, Lainey, what's your... Uh, oh, we never did talk about our favorite wedding movie. <gasps> did I bring it up last time? Mm. We just didn't go there? Yeah, we briefly touched on uh, 27 Dresses. I did. I like. I did like that one a lot. But, but how do you choose a favorite wedding oh. movie? I think there are too many. Okay, give me if, um, mm. three that you're thinking of right now. Well, I'm thinking of the ones that we talked about last time, but oh. I think we decided Fifty First Dates isn't even a wedding movie. It's just a <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's so a da it's dating movie. Dating we, movie. We move on. Um, I guess I suppose so. in Drew Barrymore's mind, they never moved on. Mm -hmm. but Adam's yeah, true. definitely moved on. Yeah. I always tend to go for like you know the you could always talk like Runaway Bride. I feel like mm -hmm. Julie Roberts, my best friend's wedding. She's in a ton of them. Um, yeah. Any anything that comes to mind mm. that. There's so many. I mean, one of the crazy ones now that I loved was um, Crazy Rich Asians. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good the one. The wedding in that was insanity. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing's a wedding movie, basically. So yeah. I remember watching it, and they had the, the, the water going down the aisle. And all I could think of, I'm like, that's a, such a horrible, because she's getting wet as she walks. And then all of a sudden, they cut to a later scene. Her dress is all dry. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> see? And that's the logistics of why you can't do that in real life. Okay, I decided okay. as a, uh, a single person myself, Ooh. my favorite wedding movie is probably Bridesmaids. <laughs> that's an amazing choice. Amazing choice. I, I, I have to, that, that's so good. I mean, it's one of those movies that like change humor because yeah. it's so good. Like you can't help but like, oh my goodness, that's the... What's funnier than that? And 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 I'm throwing yeah because I think Wedding Crashers now feels a little trashier. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it may have been funny at the time, but Bridesmaid seems to live on in this hilarity of how funny. <laughs> we'll see in twenty movie. years. If we'll it's see. A, yeah. if it's still funny. Something but. offensive will come up that we mm -hmm. don't know about. We're ever growing and learning as people. Yes. So today's topic is, without further ado. How to choose your videographer. The answer is, of course, Make It Known Media. Guys, we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. It's been great. No, in all seriousness, we know that we can only have a small portion of weddings, um, even in our area, to be honest. There's just so many opportunities um, with amazing videographers in our area and throughout the country and the globe that are just doing some very cool things. And so there's just, and there's just an onslaught of of information out there and videos out there. And so we want to help give you the tools to really uh, pick the person that's right for you. But first of all, maybe you're here and you're on the fence about whether or not you even need a videographer. Man, that must be uncomfortable. Those fences are not comfortable to sit on. <laughs> I don't know why people even get on the fence. But we'll give you just a few reasons why we think you <laughs> need it. A videographer, even if it's not us, you need to hire oh, a videographer. Right. You need a video for your wedding day. Well, we need a market, so that's the first reason. <laughs> so, no, 
in all seriousness, though, we believe in our product and we are happy to um, give something that we believe is a, a need and a, a valuable, valuable service and um, really a t- timepiece, if you will. And mm-hmm. so we, we really believe in this. But let's we'll kind of give you some of the lists that we've come up with and, and, and stole from other people. But um, the first thing is... It's something to share with people who couldn't make it to your wedding. This one... Kind of obvious, I know. It kind of hits home this year, you know? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. The wedding, one wedding we had, we had the, even the people giving the speeches couldn't be there. So we're talking like parents and sister couldn't be at the wedding because of all the restrictions. So they had to send in videos. And then we got to incorporate those videos. And we did live stream of that, that wedding. And we did uh, the toast edit so they could see it all in the end. But man... To be able to experience something that you're not there for, I, I mean, it's been a rough year, but thank goodness for technology that's helped mm-hmm. us connect families in ways that we never thought was possible, even when I was in high school. Yep. Or maybe it's not COVID times anymore and you uh, just want to have a small wedding, but there's lots of people who you know would have wanted to be there if you chose to have mm. a ginormous wedding. Good call. Having a video to share with those people, it's invaluable. Yeah, and I don't want to rain on those on the elopement parade. I'm all down for elopement. Sometimes mm-hmm. I thought, oh, that'd be a great idea. Just go destination and really, because it, it's all about you too. Like that's that's it. And so um, having that intimate ceremony, but then yet still being able to share it with all your family and extended family and friends and extended friends, <laughs> whatever that means. And you can even share it with people who you haven't met yet. So 10 years down the road, if you have kids or if you, you know, meet new people who become important in your life, having that video to share with them, um, so they get to see people, your, they get to see your wedding and they get to see people in your wedding. So, so maybe cool. a speech from a great aunt who's no longer around that they get to see. Mm-hmm. It's just really um, keeping these memories oh, forever. And this is, I think about this all the time, like imagine sharing this with your kids. It's just such a, a testament to like, how important memories are because it's the legacy of your love. I mean, sure, your kids are the physical embodiment of your love as well. But thinking through like how great is it for them to see like you in a different light? Like, oh, that's, mm-hmm. that's and not our just parents. to see, but to hear because it's one thing to have photos of your parents' wedding, but to have their voices just that you have forever and you get to hear them talk to each other and you get to hear hear their wedding. That's something that you can't you can't have. Any other way without a video? I, I I have to totally agree with this. I recently have been diving into the depths of my family's um, archives of um, of media, and thankfully my my aunts, my grandma, would take video. And this is like you know we're talking early fifties, so not many people. That's pretty rare. <laughs> pretty rare, super rare. I totally agree. But we. Thankfully, I think my aunt started to convert it to DVD, and so I've been recently converting it back to MP4 so we can use it in a different digital context. But it's incredible to see my great-great-grandmothers and and then walking around with my mom, who's not young. I, I, my parents got married old, and they were the last of five kids, and so I didn't know my grandparents, but to see them interact with my parents is just, oh, man, it's there's nothing like it. I, mm-hmm. So... As I think about video in general, having it for your wedding day is just incredible. So, yeah, huge, huge reason right there. And then something to remember the day. So not just for people who you're sharing the video with, but for yourself. And, you know, you're not going to be everywhere on your wedding day. You're so true. you're one person. So having someone to capture the moments that you're not there for, you know, something in another room or something that you just missed we will try to be everywhere, even when you can't. So, <laughs> where are the eyes behind in the back of your head? Uh, and, but it's so true. I remember at our wedding, we missed uh, like m- most of the band. We didn't, I don't think we even heard the band play. We hired a band because they were playing at a different location and we had to move around and we were doing photos or something. But thinking through what you can capture on your day, oh my goodness, and people seeing other people's reactions to the speeches and their and to mm-hmm. their because when you're you're in, watching the oh, speech yeah. giver you're not watching the audience oh but. and the dances like to see the crowd react to the dance how fun is that we had oh so many father-daughter dances that you get to see the crowd reaction to um is just uh priceless and, and frankly even sometimes we do have 
uh, one like me and the the couple are somewhere, and then you'll be shooting somewhere else, mm-hmm. and so they can see some of the the million amount of people they haven't they didn't get a chance to talk with. Yeah, and most importantly, some things can't be captured with just a photo. It always <laughs> comes back to audio. Sound baby, I uh, actually I heard a video myself when I was like. 12 Mm -hmm. it was the weirdest thing of all time it's like that's me and it was kind of like this surreal moment because it really is like you're watching these living people and it's you sure but it's you at such a different stage coming back later in life and thinking about wow i get to hear my mom's voice again or my grandma's Mm -hmm. voice again and and i'll always have that so there's nothing like video to capture um the day in your life that means so much to you, but also is is kind of a continuation of your parents' love, your grandparents' love. So we believe in this so much because audio and moving pictures change the way we remember. And a photographer can capture a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot but they're not going to get the vows and the speeches and they'll get the, the pictures of those things, or but the they laughs. won't have... <laughs> You can see the laugh, but you won't be able to hear it with just a photo or, you know, hear the silly speech or the touching moment. You can't hear that with just a photograph. Yeah. So anyways, we so as you can this tell, why. we believe in what we do and we we uh, we encourage you to really look into it on whatever your budget may be to hire someone on that um on that level or really just maybe put put in a bigger chunk towards that videographer and maybe not getting that extra hors d'oeuvre or whatever it is but really we believe in what we do and then we believe it's a necessity for weddings because no one's regretted getting a videographer mm-hmm. now they have regretted getting the wrong videographer <laughs> that unfortunately has been a, a, a common thing um with people who've been inexperienced, but that's what this next part of this whole podcast, well, technically the main part Mm -hmm. of it is we want to help you choose your videographer because we believe one, it is very important to have one. And two, uh, that we have the chance to arm you. (laughs) Maybe that's the wrong word, but give you the tools to pick the person that or people that can capture what you want, how you want it. And, to bring those memories to life in a way that you really are looking for. Mm-hmm. So without further ado. First thing you want to think about is what kind of edit are you looking for? So where are you going to share it? How long do you want it to be? Are you going to be watching this with your spouse 15 years down the road and you're going to make a whole event of it and you want it to be 30 minutes long so you can see every single detail? Or is this something you're posting on Instagram to make your friends jealous of your beautiful wedding day? And you just <laughs> hey, want, you know, no shade. 30 we, we seconds. We totally support that. We totally support that. Do you want a ceremony edit? Do you want to see every single speech that was given at your wedding? Or do you just want the highlights? Do you want all the raw footage? Do you want um, people's, do you want like a behind the scenes edit? Do you want a goofy edit? Do you like, all, all these things are, are kind of huge. And now that, um, It's videography has kind of progressed past the initial stages because the first stage was, first of all, you know, you had the big (laughs) VHS recorder or Super 8 if you're super old school, the big old light on top of it, maybe a shotgun microphone on top of it. And that's what you get. And it was super dorky. I remember um, in the 90s, it wasn't cool to get a videographer because it just wasn't a cool thing. The product didn't ever um evoke the emotions and, and the feelings of the day it was but, something that sat on the shelf that <laughs> yeah that, only, that you looked at and then your mom might watch maybe maybe but not the whole way through but no. she'll tell you she did but she didn't let's mm-hmm. be real but you and your but it's still great but again that's better than nothing i would love to have that from my parents wedding Same. or i'd love to have that from my grandparents wedding so i don't want to knock that even though that's not our style maybe that literally is what you're looking for and they're still there's still a lot of companies that do that mm-hmm. and they, and some of them do a really good job at that static camera capturing things just as it is. Um, but even that we'll talk about things that you want. So those are the, the kinds of edits. Um, I'm going to dive in a little deeper here to the kinds of edits because um, this is kind of going to go, go into some of the other stuff that we talk about, but the big thing is time and, and the length of edit is a, constant conversation I've had with brides and I'll be honest I find 
that my shorter and shorter edits have become the more important edits, almost period. Like the other edits don't compare. And I would, I would really think about how you consume <laughs> or watch wedding films. Where do you watch them? How long are they? And really think about what do you want from your day? And originally I've done, I think I've done one wedding film over 10 minutes because I, I started a little bit later. But I remember people would always get these 30 minute films or these um, used to be an hour films, maybe 10, 12 years ago. But nobody would watch it. You might as well just be watching the whole ceremony, even though you're cutting it all together, because that's not a consumable amount of time. And then it became like a 15 minute. And then recently it was down to like a seven or eight. But now three to four minutes seems to be that sweet spot for a lot of people. And they realize it. And I I was talking, I was just on a, a consultant call with a bride not not like three or four days ago. And she's like, yeah, you know, I thought I wanted like a six to seven minute one. But then I started watching several of them in different companies. And it just seems a little it's bit long. So long. It is so long because no one will watch that much um, tension spans footage. have just gotten so much shorter. Uh, so much shorter. Especially if you weren't there or even if you were there, it, yeah. you're like, well, I was there. I don't need every single detail. Exactly right. So some people like myself offer uh, what we call a teaser or a trailer. Everyone has kind of different verbiage for it. Um, and those are one minute and sometimes one minute or less. And I would even see if they do even shorter ones because maybe they do TikTok like me and you want a couple of those like, you know, 10 to, to 20 second moments to be mm-hmm. shown on TikTok. Or, but you still want the one minute teaser of, of the, the highlight film um, to really kind of dive into that. And I had another, another couple that wanted a 12 minute instead of the normal seven to eight minutes. And just know this. Instagram um, TV will not let you post anything longer than 10 minutes at this time when we record this. Who knows what they'll do in the future? <laughs> um, and Quibi doesn't exist anymore. So obviously that 12 minute format is not very popular. So really think about where, how, and what you want um, your product to be, your video to be. Because we can make gorgeous films and we can make them at various lengths. But you really have to be honest with yourself. You're like, oh yeah, if two minutes is good, then 20 minutes is better. Not always. <laughs> Hardly ever is that the case. Yeah. And it's not like we we don't it's we just don't want to do that much work. It really it's not a question of the amount of work because those 20 minute films sometimes you just you're spending a little more time on certain areas, but when you have a 3 minute film that you know you got to pack the whole day in, you know every moment You're of that film. You're picking the best, oh, the very, very best moments. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be magical. And we're still going to tell a story, but we're going to do it in a way that you can share with your friends and your friends and family can get excited for you. But also really do think about the other kind of films, which which I think um, every, every market seems to be a little bit different, whether you want the ceremony edit. That I've had... For my market, my price range, I've only had a couple, two or three who's like, no, I don't want the ceremony edit. I only want the highlight. I'm like, cool. But a lot of people in my market still want that ceremony edit. So that's that may be different. But really think about that. Is that ceremony edit something you really need? Um, the toasts edit. <laughs> Some of these things like me, you can add it on later. Do you want that? I always encourage people to get the toast edit because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> and even if it's awkward, it's still something hilarious to that as well. Um, and then so you got the toast edits. And then there's like the doc edit where they just put all together all the footage kind of in a longer format. I don't know if you've seen these. So people don't post these as much because they're not as pretty usually the time. But but really, they, they kind of get rid of all the flack in between. So they'll, they'll do basically almost most of their footage getting rid of like the shaky parts and the parts that don't look good. So you really are getting almost the whole everything. day. Yeah. The whole day oh out of their camera. Yeah. They're, and they're pretty intense. I mean, they're, they're not horrible, but the, it does take a lot of time. I, I still, the ironic thing is these, these one hour doc edits still probably take less time than it does to make the three to four mm-hmm. minute highlight reel. Just that's how it works with, with editing. Um, so really kind of do your research and, and see a lot of people use different verbiage for highlights versus teasers versus, um, wedding film reels um, and really think about what you want and be brutally honest with what you're watching and what you think other people will watch too because yeah you'll be beautiful you'll be handsome but 
if you really want to share it with the most amount of people, think about the size you want. Cause that's a really, I think mm-hmm. you, something you don't want to think, <laughs> be brutally honest about, but I, I encourage that because then you can share your wedding with the most amount of people and really get people to, um, share those moments with you in a way that they probably wouldn't, um, watching a traditional wedding film. Yeah. And while you're looking around and trying to decide which kinds of edits you want, you're, you should be watching different videographers' videos, not just to see how long their edits are, but their style. Like, do you like this, the way they shoot? Do you like the way they tell the story? What Are they putting footage in from the whole day? Are they only there for a little bit of the wedding? Do you like the more heavily edited, or do you want it to look more natural? Mm. What transitions do they use? Are there star, shots star shaky? Fade, star fade, star fade. <laughs> do you like stable shots, shaky shots? You you want to know how they edit their video because they're right. not just there to shoot it. They're also creating the film, the story they're putting together. So when you're doing your research, you want to be looking at what their style is. And, and I really do want to say style because um, when, when I say shaky or we say shaky or stable, we're not saying like... It's bad, not, it's not bad. Yeah. Some, some people's styles and some people who cost over double what I cost, they have a more shaky style than I do because that's what they're more of a running gun team and they don't use tripods as much as I do. So that's, that's literally their style. And it can still style. look really good. Oh, and they so kill good. it. They have great footage, but it's, you, you kind of got to know that style. Um, some of them are very, um, uh, artistic and there's, the, the story the is lens flare and the <laughs> Star Trek all over yep. so many lens flares so many lens flares but but even that they'll use a lot of symbolism rather than um, explicit storytelling I mean they, they story tell but they do it through more abstract um, pictures and videos and um, and so their wedding films are they're a piece of art don't get me wrong but their storytelling is very different than some of the things I do um, so there, you really do have to kind of think through that and the colors are a big one too. And it's not necessarily about camera brands because I feel at this point in the game, they're all so good. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. The, the cameras that are coming out right now are insane. They're just, uh, um, they're just nuts. And, and this is a, all of us dorks love to have that gear talk like, Oh, are you shooting? Are you shooting Canon? Or are you shooting Sony? Oh, you're Panasonic guy. Cool. Like, but it doesn't matter. Like they're the guys who are good. The girls who are good are going to get theirs. They're going to get their shots. They're going to make them look good. Um, but you got to see the kind of the way they, they lead. Um, the two styles, are, uh, I'll say three styles, that I, I kind of see people lean to. It's kind of that bright and airy style, kind of like a, um, like a medium format photographer sh- shoot, shoot, shoot. It's very, it feels more light and gorgeous. It's great for soft skin tones. Skin tones. And then you see that kind of like the dark, like underexposed, really moody. Um, and some people do a mix of all. Um, some go for more of like the natural color of the day. And even I, I know I have, I've changed a little bit in my editing, but it is something to kind of look for and see what their consistencies are. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last uh, little tip we want to give you about how to choose your videographer is get to know your potential videographers, their personality. They're going to be next to you in your face, literally the whole day. And if they're not someone that you think you can stand to be around, then you should probably hire someone else. (laughs) We're going to be your best friend. We're going to be following you around with a big old camera. No, exactly right. It's, it's who's right for you. And that's, that's really, really is important. So here are uh, some questions that I, I would suggest you asking your videographer, because things that they, oh wait, am I right? On the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, really, for me, that would be really important. How do they capture their sound? That's something that I would ask them. Be like, hey, what's what's your uh, kind of your mode for capturing sound? Because I believe, unless you don't care about sound and you want to do just kind of a, a more no audio, just music sort of vi- video, then you don't have to worry about it. But I would suggest for since we're the we believe that storytelling is hugely, that sound is arguably the most important part of capturing your video. Ask how they capture sound. If they use, um, that they have some redundancies. Also ask them um, what what other elements, like what should you do to prepare for the day? Because if they're like me, they have a lot of things that they want done for the day. They want you to make sure you have golden hour, make sure you have 
um, time for the first look and, and write other letters things. to each write other or whatever it is. So you can read on the day. Uh, the videographer and the photographers who've been doing this, they, they have a lot of suggestions. That's they some have expectations. Expectations <laughs> if you want to make, make it seem more down. But yeah, we, we have a lot of needs. So ask them what are some things that, that you um, look forward to and then really try to get their their heart of what they're why they're doing what they're doing or kind of their main driver um some guys some girls just do like oh we're just that dramatic big wide powerful moments or or some other guys are like oh i want those intimate story moments um but but really figure out what's the heart of what they do and and do you connect with that and do you want to be part of that because like Eleni just said, they're right there, right, right there next to you. And then those edits will reflect who they are as filmmakers. Some other questions I would think about for your videographer is just kind of how they work. Um, another thing is see if, if they've worked with some of the other people you've worked with, get people's uh, um, input on them. Um, if they have a lot of vendors who like them, that's a very good sign. If they have... Not too many vendors who like them. Not not always great, um, but people do kind of talk. And I do believe that um, you can't be in this business very long without having a good rep. So hiring really does come down to how good you treat people in the day and your product. It's not they're not exclusive one or the other. Um, what are some other things? Anything you think of to ask the videographer specifically, or that you would ask a videographer if you were getting married? Being I, your situation. I would want to know how long they're going to be there. I'm a, a big believer in the send off and I would want to make sure that I, however long I was hiring them for, I had them start late enough that they were there for the end, but that's not important to everybody. Maybe you want them there when you're getting ready in the morning, or maybe you want to see if they're free the day before for rehearsal dinner speeches. Yeah. Um, so I would get down to, okay, are you hourly? Are you, I'll be there as long as you need me. How much does it cost to add on more hours so that I can be sure to get you for the, for what I want you there for. And I do encourage you, um, not just for myself, but if you, if you found the team you like, but someone who you maybe don't like as much as maybe a couple hundred dollars more, or maybe even $500 more, like go with the team you like, you're not going to regret getting the style and the person you like. Um, because that, that is your day and you can find ways to budget things around, but changing, <laughs> you can't change people's personalities. <laughs> We're going to be who we are. So really stick with the people who use, whose personalities you like and product you like, because that just makes a day when you have vendors that don't get along with other vendors, it's very awkward and people are working around it. Um, but the true professionals can work with every situation so they're great to be around they're super laid back because they're confident in what they're doing so they don't feel like they have to show off or anything but just they seem comfortable in themselves so i i, I would encourage you to kind of look for those vendors videographers with that quiet confidence um they don't need to show off but they do um they don't need to they're pretty pretty comfortable in their own shoes and they can get that product you need so those are some of our ship tips trips and tips for your shopping, <laughs> for your shopping shop around how to choose a wedding videographer um what kind of, what kind of edits you're looking for um make sure you watch plenty of stuff make sure that you and them match make sure they have kind of a, a cohesive thing because personality is a big thing and it doesn't change and ask them the questions that are important to you and make sure you guys connect on that. Um, anything else that I'm not thinking of, Lainey? Mm, covered it all. That's it. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot more we're going to talk <laughs> about. But for now, guys, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate your time. We're excited for you planning your big day. Um, this is Seth and Lainey, and we are here to hopefully inform you to make you better um, wedding preparers. <laughs> we want also to introduce ourselves as the Make It Know media team, and hopefully just inspire you to have the most amazing wedding day, experience, weekend, whatever it's going to be possible. Hey guys, thanks for taking this quick back in time journey for some past podcasts. And you just heard the one on why you need a wedding videographer. Not self-serving at all. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I would like to introduce you to the amazing 
podcaster Jason, Mr. Tukarshek himself. Hello again. And Jason also, you may not know this, but he's the one who writes and produces the music on the intro and outro. Nice work. What's that What's that track called, Jason? Mm, Mal, you put me on the spot. I don't even <laughs> remember what it's called now. Oh, let oh, me look it up. I bet wow. I know. I bet I know. Oh, man. Oh, it's called Hit Me. That's right. That's How good. could I forget? How could your, your, your beloved track? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Good thing one of us does our homework. Yeah, no, he's the producer, guys. He's mm. the one that makes us sound legit. Just to give you a good glimpse of the operation here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Jason's going to kind of give us an outro. And I just want to say, guys, thanks for listening. We have much more podcasts to come. I'm going to have some guests coming soon. But we just want to arm you with information so you can have the most amazing wedding day possible. Um, because... We believe in what we do. We believe that capturing your day is something you'll never regret. Um, But we also just want you to have a day where you don't have to worry about the details. You just get to experience your amazing wedding day with the people you love. So, Jason, take it away. Yeah, so if you are uh, interested in in more information, maybe you have uh, somebody that needs a wedding videographer, uh, maybe you do. Uh, maybe you it's your brother or your sister or uh, a family member or a friend or something like that. Would you go ahead and check out SethDavidFilms.com? That is where you'll be able to find out information about us. If you have questions, maybe some of them might be answered there. Um, also, you can find us on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, same thing, at SethDavidFilms. And so definitely check us out there as well. And if you have any questions or or comments or anything, we would love to hear from you. Uh, And you can email us at seth at makeitknownmedia.com. And again, we would just love to hear uh, anything that you would like to say to us. And uh, also, uh, something that might really help us out at this point is if you would give us a review. Uh, That would be amazing. A, A really nice five-star review would be the best uh that would really help us out uh and uh and you can leave a comment and and just you know you can say how much you you love us that would be really great uh but otherwise we are super excited for what we have coming up in the future uh lots of good plans lots of exciting things and uh we will see you then